Thank you for all those who have joined this conversation, an important conversation for Prince George's County. My job today is to um, briefly go over the key aspects of our legislation, the proposal the county executive has put in to reform Prince George's County education. I'm going to do it in two parts, and then right after that I'll give it back to Scott and we'll take questions for the county executive directly afterwards. The legislation actually has two major provisions. One is for the superintendent to become a member of the county executive's cabinet. The county executive under this proposal would appoint the superintendent, confirmed by county council, and ultimately the superintendent would directly report to the county executive. Second is the creation of a hybrid school board. Under this proposal, the non-elected school board members would remain as elected school board members in their districts, um, but we do propose to add several members to the board as appointments and ex officio members. One appointment would be someone who has a high knowledge in education policy. That appointment would be from the county executive. Second appointment would be from the county council, someone who has a high knowledge in business, finance, or budget. And the third would be an ex officio member as the president of the council of PTAs. That person would have the similar rights to the student member of the board who currently sits, would have the ability to vote on all policy related matters except capital and operating budget, student, student and personnel appeals. Under each proposal, the primary goal is to add um, expertise that the county school board currently does not have or has relayed to us that they want. The goal of this, again, is to focus on academic policy and parental engagement for the Board of Education by allowing the superintendent to focus on the day-to-day -day operations and ultimately have the county executive held accountable for the success of our school system. One last piece around the hybrid school board would be the addition of higher education to our public school system. On our proposal, we have three ex officio non-voting members, one from the University of Maryland at College Park, Bowie State University, and Prince George County Community College. Each would be non-voting ex officio members primary purpose will serve as policy advisors for the Board of Education, the County Executive, and the Superintendent. With this proposal, the primary goal is to make sure we move Prince George's County Public Schools forward in a way that allows us to streamline operations, to focus on efficiencies in our school system, and ultimately to improve the day-to-day -day operations and academic performance of our students. One, we look into increased parental engagement and involvement. Two, we want to make sure that we find ways to keep and retain highly qualified teachers and instructors. And three, make sure that we get the community at, as a whole engaged in education. That is the primary purpose of the legislation. I have gone through each major provision of the legislation and will take further questions as to the detailed proposals if necessary. I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us this evening uh, to discuss the bill that I propose to restructure the governance of the Prince George's County school system and to integrate the school operations with county services and programs. Clearly there is a crisis in our public school system. Regardless of the amount of money of funding uh, that has been sent to the school system, our school remains at the bottom of the state's ranking. We can't keep a superintendent for more than a few years and our infrastructure is crumbling before our eyes. Most of us realize that something needs to be done to turn our school system around. The lives of our children and our community as a whole lie at our feet. It would be a miscarriage of justice if we continued to turn a blind eye to the needs of our schools, our teachers, and most importantly, our children. To accept the status quo is not an option. Our county's budget has consistently funded the school system well above the required maintenance of effort, and yet, our request for real change in the school system has gone largely unanswered. The county is on the verge of selecting yet another superintendent of our schools. This has forced the issue to make change in our public school operation. I ran for this office on a platform, a threefold platform of improving public safety, improving economic development, and improving our school system. We have set into motion the first two goals. However, we need to complete the trifecta. We've tackled ethics reform in this county. We've taken steps to grow our commercial tax base and create jobs. And we are reinventing our permitting and inspection system to better deliver services to the citizens and businesses of our county. In addition, we will soon have a new regional medical center, which will be the backbone of a transformed health care delivery system. And perhaps the thing that gives me the greatest pride is that our crime numbers are at an all-time low, in part because we have and we are targeting cross-governmental resources to address the significant need for a thriving economy, great schools, 
uh, safe neighborhoods and high quality health care through our transforming neighborhood initiative. And yet our public school system lags behind. On any given day, I will receive emails from parents who say, when are you going to do something about our school system? I want to send my kids to public schools, but I can't take a chance with that. Or my kids are struggling in school and nobody's lifting a finger to help them. Can you help? To the general public, I am responsible for what happens in our public schools. But as you all know, that is not the case. So I began to think, if they think that I am responsible, perhaps then I should be. Some say our school system is satisfactory, but to me satisfactory is unacceptable. Our children deserve the best possible education our system can provide. We have a choice today. Prince George's County, we can accept the status quo and make no measurable change in our school system, or together, we can change the way the school system operates by passing this important piece of legislation. But I really want to hear your thoughts on this important piece of legislation tonight. And so I look forward to uh, hearing your questions and taking your questions. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Uh, before we take that first question, one of the interesting aspects of a telephone town hall is that we get to survey um, our audience. And so here's a survey question for the night. If this was the pass, what would you want county executive to prioritize first within our school system? Please press number one if you would like him to reduce class size. Please press number two if you want to increase the, commu the school's communications with the parents. Or please press number three if you would like him to improve the student transportation system. Again, this is a survey. You can participate by pressing one, two, or three. If this was the pass, what would you want county executive to prioritize first within our school system? Number one, reduce class size. Number two, increase school communication with parents. Number three, improve the student transportation system. As we continue the town follow town hall tonight, we'll come back and, give, and, and tell you the results of that poll question. Now let's go to our first question. Gene in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Gene, Upper Marlboro, Maryland? Yes. I would like to know if uh, Mr. Baker takes over the school board, will he select three different candidates for uh, superintendent, and will one of those candidates be from the Prince George's County school system instead of out of county? Yes, uh, thank you for your question. I want to make sure that, first of all, we're, we're going to make sure we get public engagement in the process. Um, what I've said all along is that we will look at, and I've interviewed the three candidates uh, that are currently vying for the superintendent position. Uh, but I want to make sure we look at a breadth of other candidates to, to compare them to. And, and those candidates can come within from within the system. But the idea is to make sure that we get it right and we pick the best person. Thank you. <clears throat> We're now going to go to Cleo in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Cleo, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, you're on the air. You're on the air. Hi. My question is, um, why is the county executive um, seeking to um, have the superintendent to report, uh, to seek legislation to have the superintendent to report to the county executive? Why is that being done now? Um, as in, instead of at the end, I'm assuming that the county is somewhere close to the end of that process, and that process has been going on for about the last six months. What what determined um, the county executive to request this legislation now, as opposed to much earlier? Thank you for that question, uh, and 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 I've said to the members of the general assembly, to the school board and to everyone else. We're in the process of selecting a new superintendent. If we, as we, as most people are aware, the, the structure of our school system is not making the type of progress that we need to make, and we're gonna change the governance structure, we wanna do it before a new superintendent comes on board. So that's why we're introducing the legislation now, and the only way that could change, we could change the structure is through the General Assembly. Um, so that's why we introduced the, the legislation at this point. The other thing, why do I want the superintendent to be part of the cabinet? 
what that will enable us to do, much like what we did in public safety, and that is to integrate the government's operation. And that will allow the superintendent to have at his or her disposal uh, the entire government to make our education system better. As you know and I know, is not just about the four walls of, of the school system. It is, about pub it is about public safety, it's about health care, it's about social services, family service, all of those entities that are at the disposal of the executive branch. This will help us break down those silos and make the kind of changes that we've seen in our police department uh, for record numbers. My question is, what plan do you have to include more parent involvement and also parent accountability? That is an uh, excellent question. I mean, one of the things that we put on the, in the bill was to have the representative from the uh, to the board, a the president of the Parent Teachers Association. Uh, one of the things I heard, you know, I'm a recent, uh, my, my youngest child just graduated from our school system uh, last year. Uh, so I've attended uh, our PTA meetings over these last uh, several years with all three of the children. One of the things I hear at PTA is that, you know, it, our voices don't matter. Well, this will matter because you will have a representative on the school board. The other thing that we, we would do is to appoint a parental ombudsman that can help with um, uh, parental uh, involvement and increase per, uh, parental engagement. Those are the things that, that we can do. And also a parent academy, which is one of the ideas that came up to help parents um, navigate through the system but also advocate more effectively for their child and look at best practices around the uh, country. Up next is Sharon in Mitchellville. Sharon in Mitchellville, you're on the air. I would like to know uh, what made you come up with this uh, process and who would have, how would you get the authority to get it done? Well, the, the, we looked at the structure that currently is under the school system and, um, and we looked at some best practices and, and options around the country for similar school systems to Prince George's County. And so the structure that was outlined before is having the superintendent report uh, be a part of the cabinet of the county executive and that person confirmed by the county council like we do all cabinet appointments and keeping the board in place, um, the elected school board in place so that uh, and providing them with expertise on the board. We believe after looking at uh, some systems around the country, that's the best structure uh, to have in Prince George's County. Uh, the way that we get this done, and which is why uh, we needed to put the legislation before the General Assembly because they finally and ultimately make the decision of what uh, school governance looks like uh, throughout Maryland. I just wanted to give a, folks a report back on the survey we asked just a few minutes ago uh, where we asked uh, what would you uh, like Mr. Baker to prioritize uh, if this legislation passes. 72% uh, Mr. Baker, 72% say reduce class size, 19% sa uh, said improve communication with parents and 9% uh, improve transportation. Uh, thanks to all of you who uh, participated in that survey. Uh, next we are going to go to Regina and Landover, Maryland. Regina, Landover? Yes, how are you today, this morning, this afternoon? Uh, I wanted to know, uh, is anything in the, prior to your um, uh, bringing this board together to hold those all that are existing on the seat now accountable since this is, uh, I noticed you had three things that you wanted to do and, and the school children below the, our school system is at the very bottom. Uh, I don't have any children in the system right now, but I did have, you know, others in there. But I'm just curious to find out that we had to teach a relationship begins with the parents. It begins with the parents, I realize that. But is there anything in this new uh, proposal you plan to bring forth of uh, rectifying that in any kind of way? The reason I put this legislation um, forward is to hold the county executive, the chief operating officer of the county, responsible and accountable uh, for improving our education system. Right now the buck passes between several entities um, and no one knows where it stops. I know as a, as a parent uh, of three children that came through our school system that if you go to the school board and said, are you responsible for improving education, they would point to the superintendent. The superintendent says, I work for the school board. The school board says, well, maybe it's the county executive. And the county executive says, maybe it's the, it's the county council. This right here will say the person responsible for improving education in Prince George's County is the county executive. The buck stops there. 
just like for public safety, just like for improving health care, just like for um, improving economic development. That way, we, by having this person as part of our cabinet, we can look at um, across government lines in terms of our health department, social services, and others to help the superintendent uh, do more parental engagement, uh, do more um, uh, reaching out. Uh, but ultimately, it is the county executive who will be responsible to improve our education system. Next, we have Ms. Wells in Hyattsville. Ms. Wells in Hyattsville, you're on with County Executive Baker. Good evening, and thank you for doing this. My question is, what authority will the new superintendent have? Because basically, you are saying before he even comes in that he has to be approved by you. And I know that you're saying that you have three people working with you who will be in charge of finances and whatever. But it seems to me that this is just making the new superintendent a figurehead of the county executive. And with all the other responsibilities that you have, this is a major undertaking. So how, how are you going to balance that? Well, first of all, I want, I, I want to thank you, Ms. Wells, for recognizing I have a lot on my plate, and uh, this county is, is doing a lot, and I appreciate that. Um, but let me, let me uh, uh, alleviate your fears. The superintendent will be uh, responsible, just like any other cabinet, level appointment for the day-to-day -day operations of the school system. What this will allow the superintendent, two things it would allow, it will give access for the superintendent to work with other department heads. So the superintendent will have the ability to work with our police chief, our fire chief, our health officer, all of the deputy uh, county administrators that we have here that are tasked with um, making Prince George's County a great place to live. This will open up resources to that person and, uh, and help them do a better job. Then finally, and most importantly, this will, this will say to voters and say to you as residents, who is responsible for improving our education system? It's the county executive. Um, the one thing I would like to correct uh, gently, if I can, is that the county executive under um, this proposal would nominate uh, the superintendent. That person would be confirmed by the county council, and then that name sent up to the state uh, to can, um, to confirm him as the, uh, to, to approve that person as the superintendent. Uh, so it will now put the, uh, uh, the appointment process, um, like any other cabinet position, with the county executive with approval for the county council. Right now, the school board uh, selects the person and approves the person. Next, Robert in Hyattsville. You're on with County Executive Baker. Robert in Hyattsville. <laughs> Well, 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 the school board will, uh, will focus on their core mission, which is improving uh, academic education in our school system. So they'll look at parental involvement. Um, they'll look at uh, how do we retain and attract quality teachers. Um, they will be working uh, with the superintendent to make sure our school system and our teachers and the apparatus that uh, go toward policy uh, is, 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 uh, is done well. And so there is a great need for the school system. And we need to, or for the school board, and we need to make sure that they have the resources to provide uh, the type of uh, instruction that our that our kids need. Jeannie in Camp Springs, Maryland, you're on next. Jeannie, Camp Springs, Maryland, you're on with County Executive Baker. Hello, uh, County Executive. I wanted to applaud you first for doing this because someone needed to recognize that a change needed to be made. What plans do you have for increasing funding? directly to the classrooms to increase salaries for teachers and administrators to attract the best. First of all, thank you uh, for, for your support, and thank you for that question. I mean, one of the reasons that we want to make sure the superintendent is a part of the cabinet is that then we can look at the operations of the school system, especially in terms of transportation, procurement, things that don't have a direct impact on the classroom but can maybe we can help the superintendent streamline those processes so we can take the resources and direct them into 
uh, uh, to the impact on the classes themselves. We also, and I said this when I first came into office, I believe that we have to raise our teachers' salaries and our um, school personnel. Um, so one of the things I want to look at is pay increases for our teachers over a four-year period, uh, teacher resource banks where teachers uh, should, have, should not have to pay for their own supplies, um, and to focus on parental involvement. Um, so, but I believe by focusing and, and helping with the operational um, side, we can better direct resources over to um, the, the things that have a direct impact on, on student education. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Great, okay. Um, my question is, what makes um, Mr. Baker any different than any other selected um, official that's running for this particular office? What's going to make him set aside any different? And also, being in the school system myself, I, I'd like to get some feedback on the large behaviors that we're having within the school system. And also, last but not least, we need strong parent involvement, and we don't have it. Well, first of all, thank you for that question, and I think you get to the heart of the matter of this legislation, and that is who do you hold accountable for improving our education system? Uh, right now, is it the school board, the superintendent, the county executive? This will make it very clear that the person to address those concerns that you raise is the county executive. Um, because the selection of the school board would be made by the county executive and approved by the uh, uh, county council. It also means that we'll be able to integrate the operation, the governance operation, and cooperate better between the school system and the rest of government and the county government. So that means social services, family services, our health department, uh, we will be able to uh, coordinate that. That's going to make us a better school system, and it's also going to help us get maybe some of those resources we're spending in other areas directly into the classroom. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, uh, Denise from Landover. Uh, the question that I have is, in light of the frequent turnover of superintendents during the past few years, um, what is the criteria for selection of the superintendent? Uh, is there something different that you're looking at that so that um, we can get the results that we want since the superintendent will be under uh, directly under the county executive what uh, criteria do you have in mind that you think would be helpful well well thank you for the question uh, certainly we want to look at the experience of a superintendent uh, dealing with a school system uh, similar to Prince George's County. Uh, we want somebody who's motivated, um, who's innovative in their thinking, and someone willing to collaborate not only with uh, uh, the county, uh, county executive and the, uh, and, the, and the governance structure here, but also with the community, and is willing to look at and have community engagement. Um, but most certainly, I want to see somebody who's going to grow with Prince George's County. He understands that we're going to have to make tough decisions to improve our school system here, um, but there, this is the best place uh, to come and educate kids and see thing, great things happen and is willing to stay here for the long haul. If you look at the superintendents that have, that have uh, come through Prince George's County, we've had seven in the last ten years. In that same period of time, Montgomery County has had two, uh, one superintendent who stayed for ten years. Baltimore City has had uh, their superintendent there for seven years. Um, so I think uh, ha selecting the best person, having that person confirm, and working with them in a collaborative me me uh, way will ensure that we keep that person for the long haul. Yes, this is Karen. Um, hi, Karen. My question, hi, and you kind of touched on it. Uh, my question was about equity and education in the county whether it be human resources or um, books, technology, or things of that matter. It seems like from one part of the county to the other that there isn't that kind of, the, the kind of equity that it should be for every student or every child. How will you address that? In ter for instance, technology in the classroom, do all of the classroom have smart boards? Do all of the classrooms have computers and things of that like more than one teacher in the classroom I really suggest for all the overcrowding of um, the classrooms where they have more than 20 students well thank you 
one of the things that we would do, like we've done in our Transforming Neighborhoods initiative, and that is we made sure that the areas of the county which have the greatest needs uh, get the greatest resources to help deal with the problems. We would do the same thing in our school system. Uh, the ability of having the superintendent as a cabinet level position will open up the other parts of the government to that superintendent. You, you mentioned technology. This will allow the superintendent to uh, collaborate with our director of technology to help the school system without taking resources away from uh, the schools. But we certainly will look at our schools, our, our schools who are in really high need in the six uh, TNI areas. Uh, and make sure that the resources are in those classrooms uh, to provide the best education possible. I've, I've said this a lot. In Prince George's County, you can get a great education, and we do great things every day, uh, but we don't do it everywhere. The, the thing that I want to make sure happen is that every child in Prince George's County has a quality education. I am uh, Dr. Rufus Barfield of Mitchellville, Maryland, and I, uh, I thought that uh, the – executive was already one of the persons in charge of the school system by way of uh, seeing to it that there were funds available, etc. Now, what else would you want there in reference to there being a superintendent uh, who is answerable to a board of education, and the board is the policy makers, and of course the superintendent is charged with the responsibility of supervising his principals, uh, his administrators, teachers, etc. Also, how do you plan to involve parents more in the discipline of their children and uh, the accountability of their children? Dr. Barfield, a uh, uh, way to uh, uh, put several questions into into one question. I'm going to try and answer them all. Um, I'm going to try and answer them all. Can you hear me out there? I hope you can. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to try and answer all the questions in, in this. First of all, um, you hit right, at, right on the uh, head in the beginning of your question when you said, I thought the superintendent was already, uh, a school system was already a responsibility of the county executive. Many people believe that. When we go out for our budget hearings uh, throughout the county, what I hear a lot is about um, – public schools and our libraries. Um, but once I submit the, the budget to uh, the council and it approves it, the $1.7 billion is all, that's the end of our responsibility. It then goes over to the school system to make sure that we have, uh, or to the school board to make sure that we have a quality education. I believe the chief executive officer of the county should be responsible for making sure that every child in this uh, county has a quality education. The only way that can happen is to have real responsibility, real accountability. Right now, I have the budget, but I have no accountability. Um, I can say once I've funded them, if people complain about education, I can simply say, well, you know what? I gave them money. Um, but I can't tell them how to direct the money. I can't make sure. I have no oversight to make sure they're doing what they should do with the money. This will put me in the hot seat and will put every chief executive officer in the, in the hot seat. Um, parental involvement, that is a big part of what we want to see happen. It's why we're putting a member of the uh, county council or PTAs on the school board. It is why that we want to have a parent academy. Um, it is why that we are suggesting that we have an appointment of a, a parent uh, ombudsman uh, to help uh, parents navigate and advocate uh, for their children and look at best practices. Good afternoon. I'm Mary Ann. Um, I agree that with uh, Mr. Baker that something needs to be done, but I'm wondering if we make the change now. Is that going to be something implemented implemented on his administration and then discontinued once we get another administrator? Ms. Marianne, I want to assure you that the changes that we make now will be in there uh, for, uh, for the system, not only on the, this administration, uh, but for the next. The, the thing that I'm interested in is to make the structural changes that will make Prince George's County school system and Prince George's County better for for the foreseeable future, and that's why we're doing this now. So, yes, uh, this is a change that will hold all county executives, uh, once I leave this office, uh, accountable for making sure our school system is the best that it can be. 
Um, Mr. Baker, one question that uh, we've constantly been uh, getting through emails and on, on, on through our social media is about the idea that this is a uh, takeover or a power grab. Would you like to address the audience um, in terms of uh, that sort of connotations that's out there? You know, I, I heard that uh, I heard that uh, brought up when I was in Annapolis and by several. This is this is not a takeover. It's an integration of 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 government operations so that we can make sure that the school system gets the best resources it needs and that we focus um, the school board and the policy making body on their core mission, which is making policy, and that we focus the superintendent on the day to day operation in in concert with the rest of uh, the government. This was about cooperation and collaboration. It's not um, uh, about uh, taking over the school system. One of the things that I, I said in Annapolis, and I'll say here again tonight, um, I have the authority over the budget. Um, once I get the, we submit the budget, we sit down with the school system and we come up with a budget. Um, this year it's gonna be $1.7 billion. Once I submit that to the county council, pretty much I can say that I've done everything I'm responsible for for improving education in Prince George's County simply by uh, funding the school system. This year we're going to give the school system uh, $11 million over the maintenance of effort. And that's it. Then every county executive, including myself, can say we've done everything for education. But our children have not progressed in this county. And we have nobody to hold accountable. We don't know whether to hold the superintendent accountable, whether to hold the school board accountable, whether to hold parents accountable. The chief executive officer of, of the county should be held accountable for making sure that we have the best education system possible. There's nothing more important to moving Prince George's County forward than improving our public education system, and that's where uh, the buck should stop. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, I'm glad you're having this, and I'm glad uh, parents are starting to speak up because I am from Montgomery County. I, I went to school in Montgomery County, lived in um, Prince George's now, and it just seems that, you know, this is not, this is not an old, this is this 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 has been going on for a long time. And I'm wondering, um, have you looked at Montgomery and Howard? I know you've gone and done best best practices elsewhere outside the area, but we live, you know, where Howard County's north of us, um, and and Montgomery's west of us. I mean, have you all looked at that? And this model that you're putting in place now, is it something like those two counties? Well, certainly we looked at uh, all the models within the state and the models throughout the state to to uh, make sure we can put Prince George's County in the best um, position possible. And you're absolutely correct. Uh, this discussion has been going on for at least the 20 years I've been involved in, uh, in uh, po politics in Prince George's County. The idea is to come up with a system that fits best for Prince George's County. That's why I think, and, and we looked at this and discussed it, that's why we think that having the superintendent as part of the cabinet where they have access to the government as a whole and then having the school board focus on their core mission, which is public policy, and with the addition of the school board members we'd put on there, that this would put Prince George's County in the best position of making sure um, that we move forward. Um, we certainly, one of the core things is to have a superintendent that's going to be here for the long haul, uh, longer than, you know, four years or five years, but the length of time that you're seeing in other jurisdictions now in the state, uh, seven years and ten years. So we want to have a person that that is going to do that. And that's why I think it's critical uh, that the person uh, who is the chief executive officer be involved in the selection of the uh, superintendent and have that selection confirmed by uh, the county council. Yes. Uh, uh, county Exec, Sharon Baker, I'd like to uh, applaud you for this evening's uh, telephone conference town hall meeting. I'd like to take my hat off to you. And my question has to do with going back to, I think, Dr. Davidson Harrison's question about how you would get parents' involvement and accountability. I'm, I'd like to know how the community, how what kind of plan you have in place to get community involvement and community accountability. 
Well, well certainly um, we want to continue the practices that I've had in, uh, in this administration. We had um, a public town hall meeting around education. Um, we've had three public uh, every year um, budget meetings throughout the county where we talked about funding for our education system. We want to continue meeting and talking to parents, uh, students, business leaders, teachers, um, the faith community. The other thing that I've done and I'll continue to do is visit one of our schools uh, once a week to make sure that I'm talking to not only students but teachers, parents in there. And we also will have um, a parent, and we talked about a, a, a parent ombudsman that will help uh, parents navigate through the system and advocate. Uh, we're also putting a, um, the, the president of the county council of PTAs on the school board so there's real decision-making power in our PTAs. And then having a, par a parent academy um, so that parents who want to be engaged, who want to be active in the school system, will have a, a method of learning how to do that. And so this is about having uh, one educational vision for Prince George's County and integrating that with the rest of the government so we're all going in the same direction. Yes, I'd like to commend you, sir, for this fine conference town hall meeting. I'd like to know, how soon will this legislation go into effect once it's passed? The, the legislation will go in effect immediately once it's passed, and that's why we're, we're asking people to please weigh in and um, call the General Assembly and call your senators and your council members and let them know how you feel about uh, this legislation and, and, and parts of it. Uh, but this will go in immediately so we can make sure we get the right superintendent here, uh, that we start making, uh, looking at the integration of the government operation and, uh, and cooperation with the, all of Prince George's County's government to make sure that Prince George's County has the best school system possible. Thank you so much for um, hearing us and listening to our concerns, um, County Executive uh, Baker. I have a couple, couple of questions. Um, with so many things on your plate, um, with so many things you have to be accountable for, how are you going to make uh, education your priority? And um, if you're no longer the county executive, how are we, not, how are we going to maintain the level of, um, of, of expectation with the next person who may come in, 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 your, in your position? Thank you. Um, you know, education is the most important issue facing Prince George's County. We can't move this county forward without improving our K-12 through education system. It's our calling card in the county. We can't attract businesses here the way that we want. We can't retain businesses here in the county without doing this. We can't grow our commercial tax base. Um, we can't do anything until we improve our public education system. We've seen that, and I've seen it firsthand over the last two uh, and a half uh, uh, years that I've been county executive. We've seen dramatic improvements in our public in our public safety realm. We've seen dramatic improvements in health care and business, and yet um, education has lagged behind. That's the most important thing, so it's at the top of my list. Um, as far as what happens when I leave this office, uh, Thomas Jefferson said, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. Uh, we have to be vigilant. Uh, we have to make sure uh, that we elect uh, county executives and uh, county council members and school board members that are, um, are accountable to, uh, to the public and are doing the right thing. Um, democracy is hard, and it means that we all have to participate in it. Uh, this is not a sideline sport, and so it means me, you, and everybody listening to this have to stay engaged to make sure that our, uh, that our school system, which is – uh, the center of Prince George's County making it better that we stay engaged. There are no easy answers. Mr. Baker, a, another uh, sort of complaint that we have gotten through social media is the timing of uh, this legislation. Um, why did you wait till now to, uh, to drop this legislation on everyone? Well, 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 certainly the conversation has been going on uh, for years. Uh, the gentleman who called earlier tonight talked about uh, how long he's uh, been discussing the school system, the governance structure. Um, so this is something that's been going on for years. 
this past year when Dr. Haidt uh, announced that he was leaving, a real robust discussion about government operations and government structure and how do we improve school system um, uh, has been taking place. I myself announced the uh, uh, Commission on Excellence in Education where we asked 12 individuals to help me think differently about how we improve education. So that discussion has been going on for a long time. What made this legislation um, urgent and necessary now is that we're in the process of selecting uh, a new superintendent. One of the things that I want to make sure of is that whoever we select as the superintendent, whatever that governance structure that person comes in, that we allow them the four years to make the, which is the length of their contract, uh, to make the changes they need. One of the things that struck me when I talked to Dr. Height um, when he announced that he was leaving, he said, he reminded me, he said, Rashern, I came in under the appointed school board structure, um, and the structure change, I didn't to an elected school board. So there needs to be continuity in how um, the school system is going to be operated. That's why we need to do uh, the legislation now, have it in place before we pick another superintendent. I'd like to know what part will the teachers be playing on, uh, as far as uh, being on the board and also what qualifications uh, Mr. Rashad has to lead the uh, school board. Well, uh, thank you. The teachers are the most important part of our school system, as everyone knows. They're the people who stand in front of our classroom like, like our principals, and we want to make sure that we retain and keep and help educate and uh, uh, the best uh, teachers we can possibly get in Prince George's County, and that's why you know, I'm, I feel so passionate about this issue. Uh, certainly my qualifications, um, you know, that's, that was debated when I was running for election. Um, as, as a parent, I think, you know, my job as county executive, um, and the reason that uh, people put me in, the, in this position was to look at all of the factors and bring in the best advice that I, I can uh, to help me make decisions to move the school system forward. So, um, uh, we'll be able to judge if this legislation goes through whether, in fact, I'm the best person to move uh, education forward because I'll be held accountable. Uh, right now, there is no mechanism to make sure that I'm held accountable to improving our education system. This will hold me accountable and will allow the voters in uh, June of next year to determine whether, in fact, I did a good job or not. Okay, first of all, I wanted to applaud Prince George's County. You know, because I have five children who successfully graduated from the county's public schools and have gone on to get their degrees. So, but my question tonight in particular is this. What is being done to make our children feel safer today in, in the uh, Prince George's County school environment? Because of the recent violence in the other states and different places, and I've talked to several children, children, and it was troubling to hear their comments. So I'm trying to find out what in particular is being done today within Prince George's County to make our children feel safer in the school system. Uh, first of all, I want to applaud you for reaching out to our children and to uh, asking them their opinion and how they feel in our school system. This, of course, is of great concern to me as county executive. It's one of the reasons why in the middle of the budget process we stopped everything and had a um, meeting with all of uh, the government agencies that we have in the county, plus the state's attorney's office, plus the sheriff's office, and uh, we and the county council, the chair of the county council, and the vice chair of the county council, we spent a day um, looking at ways that we can make sure our children not only are safe but feel safe. But what we want to do and what we've asked our, our police department to do is increase the number of school resources officers that are in our schools. Um, we've also asked them to, to bring in their conflict resolution specialists, um, and we're going to provide um, – the police to get their resources to focus on prevention and intervention. Let me say this. I've had uh, all three of my children, as I've said earlier in the conversation, go through our school system. Um, one of the key elements of putting them in our school system was we want to make sure they're safe. Uh, they graduated from Suitland High School. They've gone on to college. Um, but one of the things that worried my wife and I most was um, safety first and then the quality of education. And so that would be paramount in, in, our, um, in our handling of this situation. Hi, um, this is Ms. Jefferson. I have a special needs child in Prince George's County Public Schools, and I haven't heard any 
mentioned about how you're going to streamline with this um, new implicant, uh, this new implementation you're trying to do, um, how it's going to affect stu uh, parents with kids with special needs. I'm definitely involved in my child's uh, education, and when I'm trying to get answers from questions, it's like I'm directed to several different people, and I get several different answers. So I just want to know, Mr. Baker, if you go ahead and get this uh, plan implemented, how are you going to go ahead and streamline the, the process for kids of uh, parents with special needs kids? Well, the first thing we'll streamline is you won't have to call all around the school system. If you're having a problem with our school system, you can call the county executive office, and it is our job to make sure that we're in touch with the people, to make sure that you're that you um, what you're doing to help your child um, that is taken care of. We also will have the ability by having the superintendent as a cabinet level position uh, access to our social services, our family services, and our work that we're doing with our nonprofits. But our special needs children and the resources they need is paramount for us in Prince George's County. That has been lacking for too long. Um, and everybody's passed the buck. And I think it's time, and I, and I know the frustration um, firsthand, so we want to make sure that uh, parents know who to hold accountable if they're not getting answers. And right now, no one's accountable because nine people are accountable. This is an important time in Prince George's County. We're at a critical moment. Um, we're about to select a new superintendent. We need to make changes in the county. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that with every fiber of the being in my body. But I want to hear from you, not just tonight, but throughout this process. Whether this legislation goes forward or not, we have got to improve our education system. And we can't wait. We can't take a, a, a creeping attitude toward people's education. I didn't do it with my children. I don't want to do it with your children. We owe the children of Prince George's County better. And what I ask you to do is get involved, make your voices heard, make us responsible for what we're supposed to do. That's what I ask that you do um, today. Thank you very much.